Hello everybody, this is David. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made music come out of my FPGA. And I'm going to play the Star Wars Imperial March song um, out of the Basis 3 through a speaker. So here's the setup. I've got the Basis 3 and an 8 ohm speaker. So the positive is going into PMOD JB pin 1 and then the, ground, the negative of the speaker goes to ground. Uh, here's the song and how it breaks down. There's a total of 18 notes, and here is the, the note value for each one, the musical note A, and the duration that each note needs to stay on. So it breaks down as there's nine notes, then there's a break, and then there's nine more notes. And then in between each note, there's a 100 millisecond break between notes. Here are the frequencies that you need to generate from your FPGA clock signal to match the frequencies of the notes that are being used. Here's the block diagram. So I have a button I'm gonna use, button D, to start the song. And it'll only play once, and then until I hit the button again. The 100 megahertz clock from the basis three, um, this is just the general block for those six different frequencies. So I'm creating six different frequency generators. And those are essentially being fed into a, a multiplexer. And so the frequency that's being outputted to the speaker is based on a state machine. So each note is a state and then based on its, it'll be in that state for the duration of time that it needs to be in that note. And then it'll switch to a break, then on to the next note, break, next note, keeps going like that. I'll show you in the code right now. Here I am in Vivado. I've got a basis three project, target language is Verilog. Here's the module hierarchy you can see on the left over here. So I just have the six frequency generators inside of a, a top module, which is where the state machine will reside. So the first frequency is A, which is 440 Hertz. So here's the calculation that I needed to figure it out. So for each frequency I needed, because you're gonna have to divide 100 megahertz by two and then by a certain number to get the frequency you want. So just take and this, this 100 megahertz divided by two, so 50 megahertz, divide it by 440, get the number you want, plug that in here. So that's the number that your counter will count up to. So for each frequency and it's just like any other counter. You have a register that you toggle, um, and then a register that can count up to the value that you need it to count up to. Here, I need 17 bits to cover this value. So it'll, every pause edge 100 megahertz, the counter will, will count down here, the else um, counter equals counter plus one. When it gets to this value here, it'll reset the counter back to zero, and then it'll toggle the 440 hertz register which is then tied into the output that is the signal 440 hertz coming out. And uh, each module is set up the same way, you just need a different value to divide your 100 megahertz by to get the, the frequency. So you just use the same formula here, divide 50 megahertz by 349, get this number here, and uh, then you can turn around and put it in your calculator and you actually get like a point value here which is not going to affect our signal at all it's going to be so close to the note you're not even it's not even going to be noticeable but you get your value and you plug it in here so this is for 349 which is f 523 hertz which is the c capital h 659 698 and 415 and so all those are instantiated whoops it was already blown up right here in the top module and then there's a wire by the name of the the note that is coming out of each um, frequency generator so back to the top here um, bring in the 100 megahertz the button I'm using button D for the play button and then PMOD JB it's actually the zero with pin but the first pin is the output to the speaker and then here's some registers. This is for debouncing the play button. Um, signals coming out of each tone module. And here's where the uh, note delays come in. 
So we have a total clock frequency of 100 megahertz. So that 100 megahertz covers one second. And if I want 500 milliseconds, then I just want half of that. So it's 50% or 0.5 of this. So I want 350 milliseconds, which is 35 hundredths of a second. So I can times the 35 hundredths by that. So just for each one that I need, I'm creating an integer value for each of these delays, the 500, 350, 150, 650. And then here's my uh, break delay right here. It's just 100 milliseconds, so it's times 0.1. And then here's all the registers for delays. I have a count that's gonna, that'll be able to count up to all of these values. Um, a cl clear the counter signal. Here's all the flags. So when I reach um, a, each of these values in the logic, I'll show you down here, then it'll set the flag for the, the particular millisecond time or the break. Yeah. And then here's the state machine register. I'm, I'm not gonna create a bunch of parameters and all that. I'm just going to use 32 bits and then use symbolic naming, symbolic strings for each state. And uh, we'll start off in the idle state. So I'm just using one always block here to take care of all this logic here. So always at the 100 megahertz clock. If counter clear, then we're going to clear the counter and then we're going to reset counter clear itself and reset all the flags. So essentially when you when we are asserting the counter clear signal, we're resetting all the flags, the counter, and then the counter clear itself. Now, if not counter clear, so the counter is, is allowed to count. And then so at those integers that I defined up there, integer parameters on the equation with the 100 megahertz. So I've got the D break. So this is 100 milliseconds. So I'll get my, my flag break. So at each... Um, milestone of time for 100, 150, 350, 500, and 650 milliseconds, the particular flag will be set high. And then this will allow us to um, transition through the state machine based on the, the duration of time that each note needs to be um, played on the speaker. So now we get into the state machine. So there's quite a bit of states because, so we have the idle and then I'm checking for that button. If the play button is pressed, right here I'm holding the counter clear, and so it'll stay within this state right here, so we'll just keep the counter held clear. Once this button comes in, I'll transition to the N1 state, which is for note one, and then that um, counter is cleared, so the counter, or the counter clear is deasserted, the counter starts counting, and then when I get my flag 500 milliseconds, because note one, is A and it needs the duration is 500 milliseconds. So I'm checking that flag for 500 milliseconds. I'll clear the counter again. I'll move to the next state. And the back in the logic in the top, right after you clear the counter on the next clock, it clears itself. So as soon as you move to the next state, the counter is already counting again. So this is the 100 milliseconds. So after each note, there's a break and I just go through each note and just for the duration I'll, I take care of the frequency later on this is just a state machine to go through and be in a certain state for a certain duration of time for a certain note so it's just all 18 notes there's a break uh, after each one here's the middle break which is the 650 um, coming down here all the way through note 18 and then we go back to idle and down here is the multiplexer for the speaker value. So just based on the, the notes. So um, if you remember the chart from the slideshow I just showed you for note A needs to come on during these note numbers. So each state represents a note number. So it's just logical or here. If we're in any one of these states, I want to turn on A. If I'm in any one of these states, I want to do F. These states is the CH three here or together for the EH and then there's one state for FH and one state for the GS and otherwise I want a zero because there are other states there's the break states so I don't want to push any frequency on the break state so it's just zero and that's the whole module right there and uh, here's the constraints file got the clock 100 megahertz the play button like I said I'm using button D and um, the speaker is on JB1 now let me show you my setup and then I'll play you the song. 
All right, here's the basis three in the speaker connected to the 8 ohm speaker connected to PMOD JB. Now, if I hit this button, you'll be able to hear the music. So here, there you go. That's how you create music and um, create a state machine to play a song in Verilog on an FPGA. Thanks for watching.